Welcome to the guide, Exile. With this guide, I would like to describe extended races, how to prepare for them, and provide a few builds for the upcoming extended races, Turmoil and Mayhem. Due to the time constraints, I will not be able to cover the whole swath of racing in Path of Exile, but intend to make a video focused on racing in the future. Extended races in Path of Exile are essentially mini-leagues that have special global modifiers and goals that can last anywhere from a few days all the way to numerous weeks. Yes, even the regular 3-month temporary leagues can be considered as a race to many, whether they are going for first 100, first at Ziri, or other first place completions. While most other official and community races are generally between 30 minutes to a few hours, keeping you in the low levels, extended races allow you to complete more of the game and create full builds to play. These are a great foray for many to get into the racing scene due to the extra time provided. Extended races can usually be played in softcore, hardcore, and solo self-found hardcore rule sets. The goal of races in Path of Exile is of course to try and come in first, either by hitting a certain level or completing a certain goal. With extended races, the goal is usually to be the top level of an ascendancy, giving more slots to place in. This means, if you plan to compete in these longer races, you will need to be playing almost every waking hour to remain competitive against the others. However, these types of races are great even if you don't want to be competitive, due to the many crazy and fun modifiers that can be enabled, such as 20 rogue exiles per zone. Now, if you do choose to be competitive, what are the rewards? Well, for the most part, placing first, or in the top of your ascendancy, will earn you an exclusive in-game unique item. This means it cannot be earned in any other way. These can include alternate art existing uniques or demigod items, which are race-only reward items. Aside from placing first, there are guaranteed and random draw MTX for other placements or hitting certain level thresholds. Along with this, if the race is not voided, you get to keep the character, items, and currency that you have earned in that race. Now that we have a handle on what extended races are, which races are coming up? Turmoil and Mayhem are 10-day races that were introduced in patch 2.6 during Legacy League. These races are a compilation of numerous previous leagues all crushed into one race, similar to a flashback race. Each zone will have an amped up version of a single league modifier active, and every hour, the league modifier will randomly change to a new one. This means for one hour you could be clearing 10 breaches in a channel map, and the next hour duking it out against 20 rogue exiles in another channel map. This makes for some great fun and massive amounts of loot, especially when starting out the race and you get bombarded by 20 invasion bosses on the coast. Now the main difference between Turmoil and Mayhem is that Turmoil is a non-voided race, and anything earned in Turmoil will be kept and moved to the standard league variant. Mayhem is voided, so everything earned in Mayhem will be lost once the race ends. This is due to the excessive size of the modifiers that are enabled in Mayhem and the amount of loot that can be earned within such a short amount of time. Here are the pool of modifiers that will be actively chosen from every hour in each zone for both races. As you can see, the Turmoil modifiers are much more tame and distributed in comparison to the Mayhem modifiers. However, since both leagues will be occurring at different times, Turmoil on November 10th and Mayhem on November 24th, you can try out both. I highly recommend trying out both races, and especially the Mayhem race due to the insane modifiers that are active. Even though it is voided, the race is insanely fun, even if you are not keeping your items or competing. So before we dive into builds, let's take a look at some general tips for these races. Extended races can be treated much like regular leagues, but on a tighter time schedule, so we can do many of the things that you would regularly do in a league to get some advantages. As long as you are not solo cell found, you can partake in trading, so you will most definitely want to set up some public stash tabs and sell any decent rares, uniques, and quality skill gems you find. Many people will be looking to get that next advantage, and this will give you some spending currency to get yours. In these races, it is generally not advised to create or perform labyrinth farming, as you can get much better returns from just interacting with the race modifiers. You can farm the blood aqueducts in Act 9 not only for experience, but for the humility divination card to get a tabula rasa. You can farm rogue exile zones for unique drops. The lower level the zone, the more restricted the drop table is, making getting a tabula or low level common unique very probable. In Mayhem, strongbox zones are some of the best for experience gains. Breach is also great in both, just a bit slower due to only being able to open one breach at a time. Paranda zones can have a very high reward rate, not only from the chests, but from Kadiro as well, so make sure to be doing your Paranda zones where applicable. So now that we have a few general tips on what to do on the race, what are the types of builds that we should be planning to play? Well, let's take a look at what we intend to complete. For both of these races, we are mainly looking at performing fast mapping, to take advantage of all the league modifiers that are active. We don't really care so much for in-game bosses, or even map bosses for that matter, as this race is all about the league modifiers. 
Since we only have 10 days, we will only be able to really complete one build. And since this is a new league, we will be starting with nothing. And since we have such crazy modifiers, we will also need to have some good offense and defense. This means that our starter build must not only be good on minimal gear, but be comfortable for leveling and also be really good at mapping. This is a tough build to fit. The best types of builds for these are ones that can operate with no uniques or required items, but can scale up by swapping in a few uniques or performing simple respecs. Luckily, as these races have so many modifiers and increased drops, you will be able to get many of the unique and item drops during your own gameplay without any trading. This can lead to you getting some decent build enabling or enhancing items. Of course, if you are playing non-solo self-found, you will be able to trade for items during the race. However, be aware that the prices may be skewed all over the place simply due to it being a race. Great builds to consider are patch viable league starters. You can look for builds in various locations, but YouTube and the Path of Exile official build forms make for great places to start. Here I will list some general build archetypes with some example main skills, as well as including links to related build guides in the written guide. These build archetypes are listed in order of easiest to hardest to get going. First up are spell builds. Spell builds are great in that they require almost zero gear, no special weapons, as they gain damage based on the gem level, and have great clear speed options. The only issue that you can run into is gathering proper leech and mitigation in the top portion of the tree, however, there are many options for shoring up these problems such as curses, auras, and mind over matter to name a few. You will want to seek strong spells that can scale into good clear speed. There are three main categories of spell based builds, self cast, totems, and mines and traps. For self cast, you will be casting the spells directly. Some good self cast options include For totems, they will be doing all the work for you. Some good totem options include As for mines and traps, traps will be a bit more questionable for clearing all these league modifiers due to their cooldowns, but mines make a great option. Some good mine options include Summoner builds like spell builds, they require minimal gearing and bring a lot of their damage from the skill gems as well as the summoned enemy level and types. They also provide a good buffer between you and the enemy. Viable summoner builds include the following. Attack builds are the hardest to get going for the average user, as they greatly rely on gear to get the best scaling from your skill gems. However, there are many great weapon types and skill options to make use of. There are two main categories of attack builds, two-handed and one-handed. Two-handed are the easiest of the attack builds to get going, as well-rolled two-handed weapons are generally easier to get than one-handed weapons. Some good skills to use with two-handed weapons include the following. Cyclone is a great standout here, as you are able to deal damage while moving. This skill can be used amongst many of the classes and makes for a great option. One-handed builds are a bit more difficult to get working, but can have some great power once you reach the appropriate gearing. Some good skill options to use with one-handed weapons include I generally do not recommend starting as a bow based character, as it can be very rough, especially for newer players. If you do feel like you can pull it off, by all means go for it. There are of course many many build variations that you can do with each archetype and skill. I only provide simple options for each. So make sure to get out there and find something that you like, because these races are really about finding a build that is fun for you. Otherwise, what is the point of powering through all the crazy modifiers and maps? Now let's get into two simple builds that I have created and can operate on next to no gear and power through maps. These builds will unfortunately not be complete guides as per my usual affair, but I will try and get across all the important information via this video. Remaining information for the builds such as leveling tips and example gear can be found within the written script and path of buildings for each. Here I have designed two builds that can operate on a shoestring budget making use of only rare gear that can go really fast through maps. They can also make use of common uniques such as a tabula and a bright beak very comfortably, even with other mediocre gear. The demo footage seen for these two builds will make use of these two uniques. Even without the tabula, these builds can completely operate on 4 links. They also do not require their eternal lab to function, but do gain quality of life from getting it. The two builds are a Scorching Ray Trickster and an Ethereal Knives Nova Ascendant. The Scorching Ray Trickster will of course be a much more straightforward and easier character to level and gear, while the Ethereal Knives Nova Ascendant will require a bit more skill and itemization, but will have a more flashy and satisfying mapping experience. Now let's dive into the specifics of each of them. The Scorching Ray Trickster makes for a solid leveling and mapping build. It is very easy going in terms of gearing and has very powerful damage output even with the weakest of gear. The goal of this build is to max out Scorching Ray's cast speed turn rate 
and get shield charge going as fast as possible to zip around maps while whirling in circles as we go. Offensively, we are making use of the skill Scorching Ray to deal damage. Since Scorching Ray is a debuff and does not hit, we can easily make use of a few powerful keystones. Elemental Equilibrium can be used to lower enemies' resistances by 50%. We can proc this by using an Orb of Storms or Lightning or Cold Damage to attacks on a gear piece and proc it with our Shield Charge. It will only need to be proc'd once per enemy since we never hit them with any fire damage. We also take Elemental Overload since we cannot scale critical strikes as we do not hit, granting us 40% more elemental damage. We also grab Whispers of Doom to apply two curses to our enemies. Vulnerability will be our offensive curse. From our Ascendancy, we also generate Frenzy Charges and Power Charges, both of which provide us increased damage over time on top of their normal benefits. Defensively, we are making use of Mind Over Matter and the strong interactions the Trickster has with it. Arctic Armor, Fortify, Enfeeble, Blasphemy, and Flasks are used for flat mitigations. A Stibnite Flask for some increased evasion and blind application to enemies. A cast one damage taken with a Mortal Call for burst damage. And finally, we have an insanely fast movement skill that we can use to manually dodge and escape enemies. As for playstyle, you will simply be shield charging into packs to get your fortify, pop your flasks, quickly sweep over the enemies with your scorching ray, and move on to the next pack. If you require more damage, you can simply throw down your orb of storms. As stated previously, we make use of the trickster ascendancy. This class gives us some very powerful buffs for our damage over time, movement skills, attack, and cast speed, as well as life and mana regeneration. For our ascendancy progression, I would follow this order. Here is the final tree. Leveling trees can be found in the description and written guide. For bandits, you can either go with Creighton or kill all of them. I chose Creighton for more speed. The main keystones that we get are Elemental Equilibrium, Elemental Overload, and Mind Over Matter. You can choose to get jewel sockets based on if and when you get any decent two property jewels. Gem links are placed in order of importance. Listed gem levels are either for cast one damage taken requirements or the levels of the gem provide no useful benefit. For gear, you'll only need to be worrying about getting rare gear with life, mana, and resistances. For your weapon, ensure that you have a scepter or weapon that you can shield charge with. As mentioned in the summary, you can also look for getting lightning or cold damage to attacks on your gear to trigger elemental equilibrium with your shield charge. Finally, keep an eye out for dexterity on any gear you've come across. For flasks, we will make use of the following. For your Quicksilver, try and roll an Alchemist Quicksilver of Adrenaline. Here's some good uniques you can make use of if you come across them. Of course, there are many more, but this is just a small selection. The Ethereal Knives Nova Ascendant makes for a really fast and fun mapping character. As stated in the introduction of these builds, this one will require a bit more skill and finesse to get going, but nothing too crazy. We will be converting from physical to cold by means of Winter Spirit in the Hrimsara gloves like the Cold Conversion Spectral Throw Raider, as well as using the Ring of Blade Jewel to alter the Ethereal Knives from a cone to a 360 degree Nova. We will also be leveling with Blade Vortex, as well as using it for single target. Luckily, this build operates even without the Hrimsara gloves, but with these races, there will be insane amounts of drops and the Hrimsara gloves are a very low level, common unique that can easily be traded for or possibly farmed from the League modifiers, such as Rogue Exiles. Offensively, we are going to be using Ethereal Knives for our map clearing skill. A Blade Vortex will be used for better single target if it is felt necessary. With the Scion Ascendant, we will be getting the Assassin Ascendancy to scale our damage through Critical Strikes and Multiplier. And the Raider Ascendancy for Onslaught and Frenzy Charge Generation and Management. Frost Bomb, Vol Haste, and Arcane Surge are used to gain more damage and speed. Finally, we have a wonderful Shatter Explosions from Herald of Ice. Defensively, we make use of the Freeze and Shatters to make most of our enemies completely inert. Evasion and dodge are used to completely avoid damage. Evasion is gained from blind, flasks, and gear. Dodge is gained from our ascendancy, acrobatics, flasks, and Aziri step boots if we end up getting those. For flat mitigations, we have endurance charges, fortify, and a cast one damage taken with a mortal call. Vol pact and life leech are used to quickly replenish our life pool. And finally, we have an insanely fast movement skill that we can use to manually dodge and escape enemies. As for playstyle, you will simply shield charge into packs to get your fortify, pop your flasks, blow them up with your ethereal knives, and move on to the next pack. If you require more damage, you can simply throw down your frost bomb. And if you really need focus damage, you can rev up some blade vortex stacks. As stated previously, we make use of the Scion Ascendant Ascendancy, with focus on the Ranger and Shadow. We pick up the Shadow's Assassin Ascendancy for the base increased critical strike chance, so we do not have to use the increased critical strikes gem. It also lets us passively generate power charges whilst mapping. 
With the Ranger, we take the Raider Ascendancy for its movement speed, dodge, chance, and onslaught while on maximum frenzy charges. For mapping, we will however require an Ice Bite or Blood Rage to maintain frenzy charges, but can easily sustain on single target if we need to. For Ascendancy progression, I would follow this order. Here is the final passive tree with the Eternal Labyrinth. Leveling trees and a tree without the Eternal Labyrinth can be found in the description and written guide. For bandits, you can choose any of these three options. Alira, Creighton, or Kill All. I chose Creighton to go extra fast, but Alira makes a very good option as well for her critical multiplier and elemental resistances. We will be placing the Ethereal Knives Threshold Jewel in the Jewel Socket just above the Ranger. The main keystones that we get are Acrobatics and Vol Pact. You can choose to get Jewel Sockets based on if and when you get decent two property jewels. Gem links are placed in order of importance. Listed gem levels are either for cast one damage taken requirements, or the levels of the gem provide no useful benefit. For this build, you can make use of two main skill setups, a 6-link Blade Vortex and a 4-link Ethereal Knives. This is good if you plan to kill beefy single targets. Otherwise, you can make use of a 6-link Ethereal Knives and no Blade Vortex. This is good if you plan to just clear basic map monsters and get some single target. You can place whatever utility you want in the remaining 4-link. For gear, you will only need to be worrying about getting rare gear with life and resistances. Like with the Scorching Ray Trickster, look for a dagger or scepter that you can shield charge with if you are not using a Bright Beak. Also look for strength on items. For flasks, we will be making use of the following. For your Quicksilver, try and roll an Alchemist Quicksilver of Adrenaline. Here are some good uniques that you can make use of if you come across them. Of course, there are many more, this is just a selection. Well. That was a lot of information, and more than I was planning to include in this guide. I hope that it has given you an idea on what the basic form of these types of races are, and how to go about preparing for one, along with getting you set up with a good build for them. I'm looking forward to these races and all the mayhem that they will spur on. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the races, Exile.